Hey everyone, so recently I made the decision to quit my long-term career of teaching and education to pursue a career in... Hold on, this lighting and audio is terrible. That's better. So recently I made the decision to quit my long-term career of teaching and education to pursue a career in cinematography. All my life I've been fascinated with movies, films, and the emotions that they bring to people. My primary drive in life has always been to create something that speaks to people on a whole other level. The main source of this creativity has always been music, however recently I rekindled my love for film and the effects that it has on others. Now, full disclosure, the things that I'm about to talk about do not pertain to every person or every experience that I've encountered as an educator, but it does pertain to a large number. These are the top five reasons why I'm quitting teaching. Back in March of 2020, when the world was shutting down, I realized I had hit a limit for the public school system, and I realized that the energy I was putting into changing my students' lives and making music was constantly being taken advantage of and underappreciated. I was constantly putting in 60 hours towards the school, spending 10 hours a week simply commuting to and from work. It was crazy. I was dealing with angry parent emails, lack of effort from students, and constant wear and tear on my physical and mental health. I realized that my work ethic and passion was slowly dwindling away because of the environment that I was in. I was being pulled in every direction and I had no time to breathe. I had no time with my family and friends or even for myself. As an educator, you want the best for your students. You want to see them learn, grow, overcome challenges that they may face to have a better future. But what you don't know is that this only happens to a select few who actually want it. There's a saying in the teaching world that 10% of your kids are 90% of your problem. Well, in today's world, those numbers have changed. At one point, I was teaching 6th through 12th grade choir, as well as 6th through 12th grade percussion. I had around 150 students that I was dedicated to, and I was putting in every ounce of energy and passion into making sure that not only they received the best music education that I could give them, but also the best life lessons. I worked on accountability, responsibility, communication skills, proactive practices, organization skills, practice habits, problem solving. I taught my students that failure is one of the best teachers out there. It's okay to fail as long as you pick yourself up and you try again and you make mistakes. From what it seemed, I was putting more life lessons into most of my students than a lot of their parents were. Which brings me to reason number one as to why I'm leaving teaching. Parents. Everyone's heard of helicopter parents, right? Well, in today's world, you see more often than not the next level up from helicopter parents. And I like to call these parents lawnmower parents or curling parents. These parents do everything they can to mow down and sweep up any tiny problem in their kids' way so that they can have a perfectly paved path in life. These parents make it hell to do your job. You don't want to get in a lawnmower parent's path. These parents allow their kids to make excuses and take their word for it. I have countless stories of parents who have ripped into me simply because of the slightest inconvenience in their child's life. I've had parents tell me that I am the greatest teacher ever and that I do so much for their students. And then within a week, we'll send an email to the superintendent talking about how I am, and I quote, a sad excuse for a teacher. Because I didn't allow a student to perform at a contest or do something that they were supposed to be prepared for, but they weren't. These are the same parents who are not preparing their child for the real world. I had students whose future I sincerely worried about because of how their parents handled most situations. They will be those parents that show up at a college professor's door complaining about a grade. When a parent did come speak with me and they could tell I wasn't going to take their side, they would always hit me with the, well, you don't understand yet because your kids are young, but the, when they get to this age, you'll see how you'll protect them and make them happy. I agree with that fact and I would do anything for my kids, but that also means that I'll raise my kids to be responsible young adults and give them the tools that they need to survive and be respected in the real world. Parents. Please allow your kids to fall down, to fail, to suffer a little bit. If you protect them from every tiny issue and solve their problems for them, they'll never understand how to handle the real world. Uncoachable kids become unemployable adults. Don't allow your kids to quit the millisecond something gets a little challenging. Help them push through. Don't let your kids believe that you will solve all of their problems. Teach them to fix their own problems. Don't allow your kids to see you disrespect teachers or coaches because if they see you do it, then they're going to do it. And it happens every day. And lastly, if you had a problem with the teacher or coach, go talk to them. Don't go straight for the throat and try to call the superintendent or the principal. Talk to them like a civilized adult. Go into the higher authority who is probably just going to tell you to go back to the teacher. Shows a lack of respect towards the people that are in charge of your child's education. Reason number two on the list is students' overall attitude towards their education. 
I was teaching six years, and within that time, I saw a huge decrease in most students' attitude towards school and extracurriculars. Their grades, their focus, their willingness to carry out a task or take responsibility for their own choices was slowly dwindling away. As a whole, a majority of students in today's society are being raised with the idea that it's okay to quit the second things get hard, and that if they have a problem with anything, to go straight to mom and dad to fix everything for them, instead of learning how to handle challenging situations. This can be tied back in with the discussion of parents. I can't tell you how many kids I saw lose their passion for music because things got too hard, or they weren't getting any better, or just wasn't fun anymore, or the worst one was they learned everything they needed from me. Things were getting harder because their expectations for them was being raised every year. It's raised because I, the professional, can see the potential that I want to push my students to be the best that they can be. They weren't getting better because when I would teach them something and explain how to practice it and to make sure that they mastered the concept, it would be too much work for them and they would just give up or put the least amount of time and effort into it as possible. I knew they never learned everything from me because not only did I teach them music, but I taught them life skills that I mentioned earlier. If they would have learned these lessons from me, then they would have seen that they were not the greatest drummer ever. They would be more humble and work on bettering themselves. They would also focus on helping others in the group. The students who told me these excuses were also the ones with a poor attitude, who were not respected by the group, whose parents solved all their problems, and they caused drama and eventually quit. I had a large number of students who were more focused on the newest video game or TikTok and wouldn't commit to anything. I don't understand how much the world has changed from when I was in school. We couldn't wait for band class. We didn't need to be overly stimulated every second of the day. But most of all, a majority the majority of the students these days, of all ages, are extremely lazy and procrastinate. I know that this is common in kids, I know I did it, but this is a whole new level. Just ask any teacher how many kids took COVID as a, ooh, I don't have to work hard anymore. Ask any teacher how many of their students are failing. Ask how many extracurriculars suffered. Last I checked, his poor effort was not a symptom of COVID. Dealing with the lack of respect from both parents and students is enough to push any teacher to the breaking point. But when it's as extreme and as consistent as it was in my situation, it causes you to think, what's happening with the world that's allowing this disrespect to continue. Reason number three for me leaving teaching is the time spent away from my family. This one's a little more focused on my specific situation. As the assistant band director in a small school district, you're asked to do twice as many things as a normal teacher at a medium or large school district. In my six years, I've taught a number of classes I was not prepared to teach, and the issue wasn't that I was not prepared for it. The issue is that I had to spend a large amount of time outside of work preparing to teach these classes. This was time spent away from my family. As a band director for six to 12th grade students, I was spending large amounts of time outside of school in rehearsals, driving buses to far away games and contests until late in the night, writing and arranging music, and much more. Learning to drive a bus and then having to drive that bus for two hours after a 60 hour work week and not getting back to school until sometimes one to two a.m. just to go back to school at 7 a.m. on a Saturday to drive the bus to a contest that's an hour or so away, work the full day for the contest and then drive the bus back to the school and then still need to drive 45 minutes back to my house was an extremely taxing thing on me. I would then have one day to be present for my family and catch up on all the things I need to do for work and find time for rest. I can handle stress, I can handle difficult situations, but at some point there's a limit. How long do you wanna miss out on your young daughter's lives? How long do you wanna lose sleep? When am I allowed to take care of myself physically and mentally? If I were to stay in this position, I would continue missing out on big moments in my daughter's lives. I would also miss more opportunities to be the best supportive husband to my amazing wife. This to me just isn't worth it. I miss so much of my oldest daughter's life thanks to this job. I'm not about to do the same thing for my youngest. As a videographer running my own business, I can make my own schedules and make sure that I not only can be at home a lot more, but I can be a part of the big moments, see the growth firsthand, and be happier for them. Which leads me to reason number four, my health. Teaching has pushed me to some of the darkest places. I gained more weight than ever before, I struggled with my mental health, and needed to start therapy. I suffered from extreme clinical anxiety and depression, and regardless of my efforts to eat healthier, exercise, and focus on my mental health, the large number of responsibilities to teaching were still too overwhelming. Anytime I took a day off or was not present for a single responsibility, it would either cause a large amount of drama and frustration in students and staff and parents, or it caused a chain of other inconveniences for many other people. With those being the case, it may Made it impossible to take care of myself. Not being present at home for my family was also causing stress, anxiety, because I knew that my wife needed my help. My kids needed their father, and I needed my time to myself. None of this was really happening at the moment, 
because I needed to spend time on work. The second I could get my head above water, I would have some angry parent, some disrespectful student, or some added hours thrown at me bringing me back to square one. Leaving teaching and doing a job that I can control gives me the opportunity to seriously improve my overall health. I will have more time to exercise, more time to meditate and focus on myself, and still have the time to see and be with my family. My fifth and final reason that I'm leaving teaching is a little hard to explain. I'm leaving because teaching is just simply not for me. I'm not meant to be a teacher. I know a lot of people will disagree with this or they'll tell me that I did a great job as a teacher and I appreciate that, I really do but I'm not a good teacher. My drive and passion does not and will not ever match that of my students. I know that's the case for a majority of teachers, but I can't just live in the reality and try to kid myself every day going to work thinking that I'm going to make a huge difference. I'm sure that some of you have heard about the Enneagram numbers. If you haven't, then I'll give you a brief overview. The Enneagram number system is essentially a personality guide. It's very similar to the zodiac signs, but much more accurate. I'd never been one to believe in any of these kind of things or care much, but when my wife brought this up to me, it was kind of scary how accurate it was, and it continues to stay to be an accurate reading. So in a nutshell, you're made up of nine numbers, but you're primarily one number. This number talks about your strengths, your weaknesses, your triggers, your guilty pleasures, your focus, your outlook on life, and much more. So I'm a three. And to give you an overview, a three is someone who focuses their attention on planning how to efficiently complete the next task and is always thinking about ways to successfully achieve their goals. I'm one of the hardest workers you'll ever meet and I focus on respect. If you're someone I can respect, then I will run myself into the ground making sure that you are successful and cared for. I'm a dreamer, creator, and entrepreneur, and I will achieve my goals. I'm a charmer, I'm an achiever, I'm confident, a leader, and a motivator. I'm passionate, excelling, adaptable, driven, focused, and goal-oriented. For all of those reasons, I cannot not be a teacher. I'm all these things to a fault and you need to have these traits to be a teacher but you also need to be able to turn these traits off and be able to understand that not everyone's going to be on your level. Having these traits to a fault means that I can't turn it off. I cannot understand how others cannot be on my level. I understand that that's not realistic, but it's who I am, it's simple as that. Having these traits makes it impossible to teach a majority of the kids these days or deal with the parents these days. Laziness, lack of respect, and lack of responsibility are some of my biggest triggers. I want success for every kid and I see their fullest potential, but that's not enough for them so they quit. This tears me apart because I put so much time and effort into them. I take time and focus away from my family and self to make sure that these kids are the best that they can be. And then I'm greeted with a huge lack of respect and this slowly tears me apart. I can't continue to be in this situation. I also can't work a job where my reputation is in the hands of teenagers. In the drumming community and the music community, your reputation is everything. And what you did, where you marched, who you taught means a lot. So regardless of how good of a teacher I am or what I'm capable of doing, if my students do not meet my expectations or perform poorly, no one will look down on them. Instead, I'll be the one that's deemed un worthy or is not viewed as a successful or notable teacher. My work ethic is not shown in my reputation. My type of personality believes that my worth is measured by my success and I can't break that mindset. Starting my own business, focusing on a skill that I can control and having a position where my possibilities are endless gives me the freedom to be who I want to be and be able to be my true self without any worry. If I fail, it's on me. If I'm successful, it's on me and the support of others. If I reach my goals, it's because of the work that I put in, the level of expectation that I hold myself to. I don't have anyone dictating my outcome. Another big thing with threes is that we care way too much about how others view us. We want to be seen as successful, fun, confident, and put together. If anyone sees us in the slightest negative light, it destroys us. We become very ashamed of ourselves for even the smallest things. This has been a personal battle with myself my entire life. What's harder is when you've been viewed poorly and it's not even your fault. When a parent rips me apart for something that their kid said happened and they don't take the time to actually talk to me, that, that just rips me up. When a student looks at me and says, I'm quitting, you have nothing left to teach me, or I'm not getting any better, or this just isn't funny anymore, that breaks breaks me down. Is any of this fair to me or anyone else? Not really, but it's my reality. It is, however, easier for me to handle criticism or being viewed poorly when the work is done 100% by me. My problem is I work too hard to please others. I can never take time for myself because usually that's when I'm letting other responsibilities down. And by working hard and not receiving the same respect in return, I'm slowly destroying my mental health. I'm hurting myself, which means I'm hurting my family and even hurting the very program that I'm working for. It doesn't matter where I'm teaching. The actual act of teaching is killing me and I can't do it anymore. Now, there were definitely a lot of great moments. There were a lot of great kids and even greater parents. I had parents who constantly took my side and made sure that their kid knew they messed up. I had parents who would build things for the program, purchase things, went out of their way to make sure that things were taken care of. I had students who took my class as an opportunity, not an obligation, and made something of themselves, who stuck it out through the hardest times and have gone to be some of the most successful
successful adults I've ever seen. There's amazing students there right now that I love and adore and I can't wait to see what they're gonna do with their lives. We had great moments, going multiple years of being undefeated in drumline contests, becoming the strongest percussion section in the region, having middle school students who can drum better than some other high school students from other schools. We played some really fun music, learned countless instruments, and had a lot of adventures in different places. I have a lot of fond memories of my percussion studio and other classes that I taught, and that's what I choose to look back on. I wanna thank everyone that helped me through the last six years, and I need to give a special thanks to my wife who stuck it out with me through all of it. Even when things were in the absolute worst times, and when I was in my darkest places, you deserve all the love and thanks. So there you have it, guys. Those are my top five reasons for leaving teaching. I'm very excited to continue my new adventure. Wish me luck.